Hello everyone, my name is Evgeny Simon. I am technical architect from the Customer Times. I have around six years experience in Salesforce. And during my career, I faced with performance issues on huge projects with a lot of customizations. So today I would like to share my knowledge and my findings with you, and I hope they will be useful. So lightning performance analysis, let's start. Our agenda for today, and uh, the first item will be lightning page loading phases. We will discuss the key aspects of the loading of the lightning pages. Uh, it is important in terms of the performance and it will help us to be on the same page during this talk. Next item will be performance analysis instruments. I will give you the instruments that I used by myself and th that can be useful in terms of analysis of the performance of the application itself and, and even component level. Next item will be box carrying. It's uh, the important technical mechanism in Salesforce that definitely has to be taken into the account while working on the improving the performance of the lighting pages. <coughs> Next item will be performance analysis strategy for apps, pages and even component level. So we will discuss some steps uh, that we can go through to analyze and improve our performance. Then I will share with you my recommendations in terms of building lightning application, lightning applications with good performance. And also we will briefly discuss the instruments for measurements that will allow you to uh, that will allow you to consistently measure your performance and to evaluate your performance improvements. So let's go to the first one. Page loading phases. So when user loads the page, first that he sees it's a release animation, right? It's basically time when framework is loading. Next time, next phase is um, gray or blue screen. It can be like um, even less than second. It will take less than second, but it can be even dozen of seconds. During this phase, the system gets the information about the page content and uh, the structure of this content, how it is, how the components are related to each other, how are they located on the page. And it is done through get template descriptor call. <coughs> so we, the user sees the gray screen until he will get the response for this request. Also during this phase, system starts getting the definition of the separate components using our component dev, uh, CMP dev requests. So when we got the response from the get template descriptor, our page will start loading. A few words more about get template descriptor. Uh, based on our tests, we can assume that frequency and duration of this request depends on the size of the descriptor, basically the size of the response. And the result, it means it's the, uh, it depends on the number of content on our page and structure of this content. So, so um, the more complicated page you will have, the longer and the more frequent this request will be. And the longer the user will see gray or blue screen. Also, we found out that a user <coughs> sees gray or blue screen uh, for a longer period of time on his very first loads uh, of the system. So at the start of the day, or if uh, he hasn't used the system for a few hours. So it means that work warm up scripts can be pretty useful uh, to decrease the, the influence of get template descriptor call on our page performance. So in next phase, we are basically users start seeing the page with the components on it. These components ha have the spinners because 
they are just loading, they are making the calls to the server to, for getting the information that is needed for their load. When they load it, user basically sees a fully load page with all the components. But if we look into the network logs, we see that after loading of all the components, Salesforce also does some post-loading requests. That, that's how I call them. And they don't affect uh, loading time of the page, but they still persist. So uh, here I basically uh, presented the same information, but in more detailed view. Uh, in, in a table. So you can look through it uh, in more details if you want. Uh, what does affect page performance? We can group uh, these items at least in, through, in three uh, columns, right? So first of them is page site. site. Amount of content and complexity of it, which is uh, located on the page. Amount of content loaded at the same moment of time, which is also important. The way how interactions with the server are implemented, quality of backend processes implementation, quality of client-side data processing, the way how components communication is implemented. From the organization side, it's um, important items is type of the instance, user's latency with this organization, workload of the organization with active users and processes. From the client side, uh, important is internet connection, type of the client, it's desktop, tablet, mobile. Also important the browser and even browser version and hardware. Now let's talk about analysis instruments. Uh, first of them, it's Lightning Usage App. This app uh, mostly can be used for uh, finding the critical weak places in your system uh, where performance degradation can be observed. Uh, so this app allows us to, to monitor what are the pages that are viewed most often in the Lightning experience. It also shows the slowest pages. Also, it allows to track daily and monthly active users, daily and monthly switches to the Salesforce Classic, profiles and users that switch to the Salesforce Classic the most, types of the browsers that I reused, and even number of active users. So this one we can use to identify our problems. <coughs> Next one is the Salesforce Optimizer. It's the Salesforce app that allows you to run the scanner on sandbox or production, and as a result provides a report with more than 50 metrics that are covering everything from storage, fields, custom code, custom layouts, and much, much more. Uh, and what is important uh, that this app, instead of providing a report and highlighting the weak areas, it also gives a guidance what admin should do about it to improve and fix it. Next instrument is pretty powerful. It's one of my uh, favorite instruments. It is called Event Monitoring. This instrument is built on the specific events in the Salesforce. The list of these events you can see in the right side. So it's a pretty huge list of events. So uh, Salesforce tracks these events and saves the logs about these events. Uh, in terms of Performance analysis, probably the most uh, interesting for us will be uh, events related to the lightning, web clicks, performance errors. Also interesting is Apex executions, lightning page, page view, Apex trigger and flow execution. The peculiarity of this instrument that events do not appear in the log file until at least 24 hours after they occur. Also, uh, to use this instrument, it is required to have Event Monitoring License or Salesforce Shield. A uh, few examples. So that's how um, this instrument can be reached through Heroku app. So here you are able to pick date range uh, to get the logs, type of the event, 
and interval. Uh, basically, how to group these logs daily, hourly, for example. <coughs> and then you will be able to pull the logs, save it and open. For example, it's the, uh, it's the example of the Apex execution log uh, in the blurred, uh, blurred column at the right. Uh, you will be able to see the name of the Apex classes with the methods which were used as uh, entry points into the Apex execution. Uh, admin is able to see how many times these uh, controllers and methods were executed. The number of SQL queries that were uh, done during these executions and even uh, the time spent for processing these Apex actions. So it is pretty useful and uh, this information can be uh, analyzed uh, by grouping such logs, by doing a test and then uh, specific tests, downloading the logs, comparing the information from different logs. So it's pretty powerful. And uh, almost the same, uh, you will be able to track from the Aura requests. You will be able to see uh, what are the controllers were uh, called with the methods and how long these server calls were processed from the uh, client-side components to the server, basically. Uh, yes. So, also upon this instrument, Salesforce uh, allows to do other useful things. Uh, for example, feature which is called real-time event monitoring. So you are able to basically subscribe to such events that we just dis discussed and uh, do specific actions based on the handling of these events. Uh, also, I found the package on the App Exchange Eagle Ice Event Monitoring, which allows you to analyze these logs in a in prettified way. Uh, personally, I haven't used that, so I can't say whether it is good or not, but you can check to check it if if you want. Also, Salesforce has pretty powerful instrument, which is called Analytics Studio. And this one probably requires like additional talk about it. It's an application which allows you to analyze, uh, filter and um, build uh, the data based on the event logs. So you are able to uh, upload the data sets and build charts, which will allow you to uh, analyze it better and faster. So next instrument is not that fundamental in comparison with previous one. It is more about uh, performance of the lightning pages. It is called Salesforce Community Page Optimizer. Uh, it has community page right in the name, but it, it, it still works in um, traditional internal Salesforce with the flexi pages. So it's a Chrome extension, which allows to analyze the flexi pages on load. And also you are able to record the specific session. Uh, it has a number of rules and best practices, and it evaluates your page and uh, provides a score uh, against these rules and best practices. So uh, you are able to check whether uh, your page is aligned with best practices. Uh, also, it allows you to uh, track network monitoring, components like cycle, component costs, actions, and their characteristics. I put here a link uh, to this app and also a link to the guide, uh, how to use it. Example, what I, uh, meant, what I meant by actions and their characteristics. So um, here you will be able to see the list of actions 
basically the server calls that were done during your recording session and their characteristics. Are they background? Are they storable? Are they abortable? And you will be able also to see the time spent for processing these actions. Uh, components. In terms of components and their life cycle, you will be able to see uh, how many times uh, these components were created, how many times they were rendered, how many times they were re-rendered. It's also pretty important and useful uh, for analyzing your components, their performance and their life cycle, basically. <coughs> Uh, next instrument is App Builder page performance analysis. So um, it can be found in uh, in Page Builder. So if you click Edit Page, you will see this page analysis in at the right bottom uh, corner. So it uh, it can show you whether your page performance is poor or moderate, and provides the recommendation to improve the performance. For example, it can show you the components with too complicated structure, or uh, it can show you the information about some uh, instruments that are used that can uh, be a reason of the performance degradation. For example, force refresh view event used with your components. Also, it shows the number of components which are dropped on the page. <coughs> Lightning Inspector ins extension. It's also Chrome extension. Um, it also can show you the network, component tree, uh, the requests that are, were done, but it is also similar to the other extensions. Well, why I uh, still will use this extension is probably for the event log. So you're able to see uh, the events sent uh, during your recording session. It's uh, either, uh, it's both like, it's standard events and custom events, so it even shows you the application events sent and component events sent. So uh, you can easily analyze uh, whether your component interaction is built in an uh, appropriate way and also find some uh, problems in terms of performance uh, in case if something was done bad. <coughs> uh, and the last but not the least, it's uh, our classic network tab in web tools. Uh, it allows us to see the number of requests. What are the components are sending these requests? Request payloads, timing of the requests, order of requests, uh, so, what we can see here, uh, we can see here uh, name of the requests, basically a server calls from the components, in case if we are talking about custom requests, their timing and also waterfall, the timeline, uh, when they were executed, whether uh, it shows whether the requests were executed in parallel, uh, how long they were executed, so these green lines at the right side, it's the, basically a timeline. Um, in case if you see aura.apex action execute, it means that it's the execution from the LWC component. In case if it's other dot name of the component and then name of the uh, method, uh, it's a aura component. Um, you are able to see the name of the component and the payload if you open this row. So you need to click on it and you will see the payload, the response, all the detailed information. <coughs> uh, in this tab, you are able to import or export the hard file. So basically all these logs, it's a, a big hard file. It's a big JSON. It means that uh, you are able to build your own analysis instruments uh, by parsing this JSON and you are limited only by your imagination. So, for example, in our case, we built the Python script that immediately, immediately shows you the list of 
Apex methods and Apex classes that were executed during the recording session. And it is useful because you don't need to click on each row to see uh, the name of the class. Uh, also, you are even able to measure the performance, how long some specific components are loaded, because you know uh, what are the components are sending what requests. Uh, also, what else do we see here? Uh, you see the number numbers in each row, like execute equals one, execute equals uh, six in the row uh, where the arrow uh, is pointed. What this number? What does this number mean? For example, six here. Uh, let's let's discuss what is this number. This number it's uh, it's a uh, a number that's, that shows us how many requests are batched into the one request to the server. Uh, and this happens because of such mechanism, which is called box carry. So what is it and how does it work? Box carrying is the mechanism of batching multiple queued foreground actions in a single request, XHR, to minimize network traffic. Uh, so, calls to the server are made as XHR requests. Uh, various browser implementations limit the number of parallel calls to the same host. And in the uh, most modern browsers, it's six. So, at the same moment of time, only six parallel requests can be done. Box carrying effects kicks when all available parallel XHR uh, requests from the browser XHR connections basically from browser to the server are busy. Uh, example, we have the page where we have 10 components dropped on this page and all of them are doing a single request to the server. So on the page load at the same moment of time, we are doing 10 requests. It means that uh, only five requests will be sent to the server as a single request. For when six, is, when, uh, six and seven and other five requests, uh, the system, when the system will try to send them, uh, it will see that there is no available connection, uh, connection uh, no available slot for your XHR requests. So it will batch all these five requests into the one request to the server, uh, one XHR. When these requests are batched together, they are coming to the server together and each action runs in the bundle sequently instead of in parallel. And it means that if you have five requests batched together, which uh, usually take for one request, for example, one second to load uh, to get the result from the server. If they are batched together, the response for this batch will be five seconds. And it means that all five components, instead of waiting only one second for the response, will wait five seconds uh, for the response because the response uh, is coming for all these batch requests together. Before winter 20, Apex limits even applied across all actions uh, batched together in request XHR. Even static Apex variable state was shared between actions in the same request. <coughs> uh, so let's see in network the example. You see that, uh, you can see on the timeline that at the same moment of time we have six, six requests. Then uh, what we need to uh, execute eight more requests. You can see eight number at the left side near the error. I also uh, made a bigger uh, piece of this screen for you to see this number eight. So system box carried eight requests into the one XHR. And as a result, you can see that system waited for the response for the nine seconds. And it means that eight components we're waiting for the response for nine seconds. 
uh, instead of progressive rendering, when uh, the user sees like one component log and the second component log, the third component log, that the user just sees eight components with the spinners for nine seconds, which, which is pretty bad for the user experience in terms of the loading of the page. <coughs> How this can be avoided? Uh, for the our components, it can be avoided by using set background action. So you simply uh, call the set background before enqueuing the action in our component, and uh, Salesforce will uh, execute it in the background, and it will never be box scared. But uh, Salesforce also says that please do not uh, use set background for all your actions, because in case if it will be a pretty big list background actions, we can't say that all of them will not be box scared. For LWC components, we don't have available instruments. What is the alternative for the LWC custom alternative <coughs> that we use, for example, in our projects? We use the approach with the proxy or a component. Component A is the LWC component. It, uh, we have a need to call a server. And instead of calling a server using our uh, LWC instruments, we are sending to the proxy our component, in our case it's Apex Action Service, uh, the event with class name, method name that needs to be executed, and the payload, and also resolve reject. Uh, this uh, Aura component executes uh, the Apex Action Service controller, Apex controller basically. It also with the set background uh, function. So it executes it on the background and it pass class name, method name, and payload. Then this Apex Action Service controller using uh, callable interface call the components component A controller uh, with the correct method name and payload. Then component A uh, contr controller of the component A returns a value, and this value is also returned to the component A through this uh, chain of elements. And as a result, we executed the we called the server from the LWC with set background. And as a result, this uh, server call is not box scared. Uh, this is the example of the same situation that we um, uh, saw a few slides before, but now with the set background used. So we have here a progressive rendering. You have big number of requests and they are executed in parallel, in, uh, executed on background, they are not box scared. So the user is waiting for a one second for each component, basically. And the user experience is better and even the page loading time is better. <coughs> so recommendations. Um, use set background property for a long running requests. For example, requests uh, which are usually take more than five seconds. Uh, it helps to get rid of negative box scaring effects on these requests and also on other requests sent at the same moment of time. For example, you have some component like header component, right? And you uh, usually uh, get response for it for during one second. And this component is pretty important because it displays the name of the record and user wants to see it as fast as he can. But the re request from this component is box scared with some other long running request, which takes more than five seconds. And as a result, uh, as a result, user will wait for the response for this header component for more than five seconds. Uh, another uh, other option, uh, other use case when set background can be used, it's when we have a component where the information has to be loaded as soon as possible, and we can't um, we can't wait for a long time. So we don't want 
uh, for this request to be box cared. So use set background for it as an option. And also if you have uh, some specific, uh, specific cases when you have chain of the requests, you can use set background for uh, the request from this chain, just not to uh, degradate the performance of this chain, not, not to uh, be in a situation when second request, which is waiting for the response from the first request, is waiting for a long time because first request is box scared. Uh, let's talk about analysis strategy for overall application performance. First of all, uh, we can identify the most critical use cases using the, the for example, the Lightning usage app. Then we can run Salesforce optimizer also to get weak areas and also guidance what can be done to cover them. We can look in, into even the monitoring to identify the most frequently used calls that have influence on performance across all applications. Uh, or all applications, sorry. Uh, also, then we need to dive deeper into analysis of the pages that have worse loading results and pages that have very similar content in terms of component stack to other pages across an app and identify the issues like box carrying, inefficient data collection, inefficient server interactions, bad performance of server processing. In terms of flexi page, the strategy could be um, check overall amount of requests sent, sent by component. Identify which requests are sent by which components. Check amount of repeatable requests and their payloads. Determine whether these requests are sent by single component. If repeatable requests are sent by single component, logic and implementation of it has to be reviewed. If similar requests sent from different components at the same time, a dispatcher component or caching has to be considered. Uh, also identify requests that usually takes a lot of time, for example, more than five seconds. Execute them in background mode to get rid of negative box carrying if effect on other components. Also identify request dependency by monitoring the order of requests. It allows to identify which components have the chain of requests. Such components need to be additionally analyzed to verify whether this request chain can be replaced by one request or a couple of parallel requests. Verify that requests are needed to be sent. Payload of requests in some cases depends on dynamic configuration. Make sure that requests are sent at all, uh, not sent at all, instead of sending it with empty payload just because there is no configuration for some specific part of components logic. And an uh, important one, all of them are important, but this one is critical, I think, and it uh, should be considered as the first one. Discuss whether part of the page content can be moved to the separate Salesforce tabs and accordions and simply moved out from the loading context, basically to uh, decrease the, number, the amount of the content which is loaded at the same moment of time. Analysis strategy for the component level. We need to analyze components behavior isolated and on the flexi page where it is uses, used to identify performance degradation uh, by what basically performance degradation is caused, uh, whether by other components and uh, because carrying effect or uh, performance of these components is bad just because of it. Uh, next point is analyze component lifecycle, how it renders through renders. Analyze how this component communicates with other components. Check whether there is no redundant listeners. Check dependency between components. Verify the efficiency of service server interactions. Try, try to minimize number of requests to the server from the component, but except some specific cases when we need to send more than one. But better to have less. Analyze effectiveness of the server processing. In terms of recommendations, so um, always try to keep your pages clean, trying to decrease number of components on it. Try to move components into tabs accordion to load them only on demand. Try to decrease amount of server interactions whenever it is possible. 
try to remove dependency between requests to send them in parallel. Keep an eye on uh, request payload. Don't send requests if there is no need for it. Move long running requests to the background to get rid of negative influence on other requests and components. Load configurations for the components that are displayed on demand only when user is opening these components. Think about using caching through storable actions, platform cache, client help cache, but need to take to the account caching validation issues. Verify alignment with the best practices, keep a version up to date, enable secure browser caching, and enable CDN. Uh, also, in terms of configuration of the standard components, we still needs to, need to try to decrease number of components on the page. We need to use tabs and accordions. Also, we need to decrease number of fields in record detail component. Less than 60 recommended for desktop and less than 25 for mobile. Also, decrease number of related lists displayed, especially heavy loaded. Hide news or Twitter and Twitter component. And for the pages that are used on phone device, it is recommended to have less than eight visible components on the page. Also, while doing the performance improvements, we need to somehow understand whether we improve something or not, right? So we need to do measurements. First of all, before the measurements, and to have a clear vision whether uh, your measurement is valid, you need to uh, compare the state of your instance and uh, your internet connection. This can be done by uh, opening a speed test. So just append speed test to your domain uh, to start speed test. Here we have uh, several metrics. Um, from my personal opinion, opinion, probably octane score and latency is, are more uh, the most important. Uh, Salesforce has his own recommendations what is the octane score uh, should be, what is the lat latency should be, so you can check them out. And uh, briefly um, about the instruments that can be used for the measurements. Salesforce is a pretty complicated uh, platform in terms of performance and measurements. It is hard uh, to, to do a clear, pure measurements because a lot of system specific processes are also, are also uh, launched and, and executed. Uh, but we have a list of the instruments and you can use uh, them based on your uh, purpose, on your demand. So first of, of, of all, event monitoring, right? We have plenty of data there. You can see uh, the time of loading of the flexi pages there. You can use it. Uh, to to check the time of loading of the flexi pages, for example, you can you can compare it before the performance improvements and after. Also, you can use the EPT counter for the page loads. Uh, Salesforce recommends this uh, this instrument. So you simply add EPT visible to to you your URL, and then on the page loads you will see the counter at the right side, top right side, and it will show you um, how like how many how long this, this page we're loading, was loading. Next uh, instrument is just a stop and watch message, right? Simple one, just on your timer, you can start timer when you loaded the page, start loading your page and when it is loaded, just stop it. But it's pretty simple, but probably not that effective in terms of aut automations and big number of measurements. Uh, scripts based on the network info, hard files. That's what I, um, told you about the web uh, web tools and network tab. We are able to um, download hard files there, parse it and see uh, the metrics. And it can, so as a result, it can be easily automated. Also components, uh, component specific scripts that track component lifecycle. So uh, we can check, like start the timer when uh, components component is inserted into the DOM, basically, and uh, stop the timer when, for example, spinner uh, is hided. Just uh, an option for uh, automation, uh, automated measurements for the component loading time. And 
other automated tools. There are some existing tools for the measurements. They are not uh, ideal to, and you are able to, uh, to implement your own tools based on the network info, based on the DOM elements. So here you're also um, limited only by your imag imagination and skills. So uh, that's all regarding the performance and performance analysis that I would like to present for you today. So thanks for your attention.